Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion in the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Here, I will discuss the tarot card that sits on the side of the page. Then I'll do a quick review of the day's aspects before I play another card that may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The tarot card that sits on the side of the page right now is the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands relates astrologically to the second 10 days, also called the second decan of the sun's transit in the land of Leo. Leo is a fire sign. Wands and tarot are also about fire. And fire element symbolism is about spark, drive, determination, motivation, enthusiasm, excitement, whatever those feelings are that come up that move you into action. This can also be uh, restlessness and impulsiveness, impetuousness. Um, so, you know, that, that level of emotion that makes us uh, move quickly and, and want to take action. And here we see with the Six of Wands, somebody who has taken some kind of action that everybody else is very impressed with. So they've made this person a, a, a wreath of laurels to wear on their head and to hang from their staff. They've given them a strong horse to ride, so they ride supported. And they celebrate this person by holding you know, similar staffs and walking along the side, almost like they're in a parade. This is a victory. You see the V in the middle, V for victory. This is a moment of achievement and um, of really being gracious and also a little proud and accepting the, the thanks, the gratitude, the cheers and support of people who recognize what you have done. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if it's something that you've worked hard for, that you've put a lot of drive and spirit and enthusiasm and spark and determination into. If you were determined to do something that would be a benefit to everyone, or at least be amazing to everyone, and you did it, then you deserve the recognition. Uh, but with this card also comes you know, a reminder that this is a moment, not a lifetime. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't get to run in the parade for the rest, you ride in the parade for the rest of your life. Uh, when you make an achievement like this, um, you can try to choose to sit back on your laurels and just enjoy the fruits of it. And, you know, if it's a big enough achievement, you might be able to do that. But uh, what you have done is sort of waste, if you do that, what you've done is sort of wasted the social capital that was given to you and perhaps the political capital that was given to you and perhaps even the monetary capital that was given to you, <laughs> um, you know, that could have been parlayed into a, a bigger determination, a, a bigger passion, a bigger pursuit, and, you know, ultimately a bigger conquest and a bigger victory. So remember to, to, Remember to pause to appreciate what you've done and to allow other people to appreciate what you've done when you have a victory. It's okay to shine like the sun a little bit, but also remember that, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to shine like that forever um, unless you keep moving, <laughs> right? A rolling stone ga gathers no moss. Okay. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle some cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is in Leo. We are just past the midsummer um, holiday, celebration, festival. We didn't really have a midsummer festival here. I've been trying to stay inside. It's so warm outside. But uh, it's the midpoint between, we're just past the midpoint between the uh, solar, the summer solstice, <laughs> pardon me, I'm sorry, and then the, the autumnal equinox. So we're at the midpoint between those two. The sun's influence is starting to wane in terms of the length of daylight in our days, the amount of daylight in our days. Uh, however, its heat is really lingering, so it still kind of dominates our attention, the, the sun and the heat. And that's okay because it's our time to shine. It's our time to just love being in our bodies and feeling the way that we feel, love, loving the way we look loving the beauty of life around us as, as we do in the summertime when everything is, you know, lush and full and, uh, and, you know, 
really outdoors, <laughs> really out expressed outside in a beautiful way. Uh, and then the moon is a first quarter moon in, Scorp in Scorpio. So today we shift gears from uh, thinking, creating, planning, setting intentions and goals to uh, actually acting on those plans to achieve those goals. It's time to hit the acceleration pedal <laughs> um, and, and get going on the things that you have planned to do. Don't allow yourself to be distracted at this point, okay? And I'm saying that because on the moon side today, moon goes in opposition to Uranus, conflict with impulsive changes. Moon goes in opposition to Mars, conflict with assertiveness. Moon goes square to to Saturn. This all happens after four o'clock this, this evening between four and midnight. Uh, moon goes square to Saturn. So we have challenges coming up with our responsibilities or maybe a feeling of restriction or restlessness. Um, you know, obviously arising if we're having, if we're also struggling with a, a desire to be assertive where it's not gonna work for us, right? So, um, you know, don't allow yourself to get distracted by these difficulties, by these little challenges. And remember that they are all quite normal and they're also all quite temporary, okay? These are passing themes. They happen a lot. They last about two hours. They may or may not have a very strong effect on, on you, dep depending on who you are and what your own astrological uh, makeup is. And then right around midnight at 11.56, Moon goes trying to Venus. Ask and it is given. Anything that you want to receive, it's a good, it's a good time to ask for it. If you want to ask yourself, you want to ask spirit, if you want to ask your, your partner, your spouse, your brother, your sister, your, your mom, your dad, <laughs> your kids, whatever it is that you, that you uh, desire to receive, you're in a blessed position to ask for it and receive what you're looking for, okay? Uh, that, and that's beautiful. On the sun side of the page today, early this morning, sun went square to the moon. That, is, that, that really indicates that first quarter half-lit moon. Uh, and this is, our, this is our outer life in a sort of challenging position with our, with our inner life, our expressing life in a challenging position with our feeling life. And that, that challenge is to remind us, again, don't get distracted. It's remind us what we're dedicated to doing, what we have, um, you know, what we have made plans for, the, the intentions we set, because we have a week to culminate some goals for that full moon in Aquarius, right? So this is to push us forward. It's, it's just to remind us what, our what we are dedicated to so that we can go ahead and do that. Venus goes quincunx to Saturn today. And you know this is about a this is about sort of a work life balance sort of idea. You know Venus is over here saying, uh, "What about my romantic connections? What about my you know what about my responsibilities to my home life and my personal self?" And Saturn is like, "What about your responsibilities to your community and your workplace and the work that you're doing in the world?" Okay, so uh, something is something is getting too much of your time <laughs> and attention. And we need to we need to make a move to uh, even that out, so we're not spinning on a wobble, right? Uh, we want a more even, uh, relaxed feeling <laughs> to the work and life, the work life balance. Uh, Pluto is retrograde. Go easy on yourself. We're all going through deep personal changes at this time that we might not even really understand or be able to describe, but you are working harder than you think you are. Uh, Saturn is retrograde right now. We're working on being reliable. We're being we're working on being good resources for our community, good re resources in our workplaces. Uh, Neptune is retrograde as well, and this reflects the truth, okay? It just doesn't allow us to indulge in fantasies. We can tell the difference, and we're going to prefer the truth because it's in the truth, in the real world, where we can begin to actually in reality manifest the life of our dreams right so sun is trying to jupiter here and this is sort of like this is sort of like what's happening on the uh, on the surface okay good fortune is at work in our lives especially for positive inner expansion okay we want to get bigger on the inside we're trying to 
grow our capacity to be, do, and have more and more all the time. Um, and this is kind of what's going on underneath, okay? Venus is square to Chiron, but sextile to Mars. The square to Chiron is like, hey, you know, there are some things, we have some defenses, we've put some walls up in some places where it's really not working for me anymore because I, I don't feel like I can ask for what I need. People don't know how to help me uh, get my needs and desires met. And so I've got to be able to sort of, uh, Venus wants to get in there and sort of help Chiron uh, decide what walls to take down, <laughs> right? To, to, to make uh, the ease of access to resources all the easier for Venus to receive. And then Venus sextile to Mars is really creative. It's really receptive and assertive working together, okay? So it's kind of a sexy vibe, but it's also just good for collaborating with somebody uh, whose work style will complement yours very well. So, um, you know, it's a good time to be creative. Venus is also sextile to Uranus, which is conjunct to the North Node. These guys have been down here in the land of Taurus, okay? Causing us stressing and anxiety about how we're going to get the things that we need and desire down the road. You know, we're watching the prices go up. We're watching, you know, the prices go down. We're watching all sorts of things happen in the world, and it makes us anxious. It makes us wonder what you know, tomorrow is going to look like what next year is going to look like. Uh, Venus is sextile to Uranus right now, though. So, so Venus is also sextile to North Node because they're conjunct. And so this is a very cooperative vibe. She's feeling creative. She's feeling like trying something new in terms of um, in, in terms of not having those defenses so far up. Uh, she's feeling like um, any any new approach we can take to uh, getting what we need. Um, in including getting our needs met by unconventional means, like not necessarily getting what we thought we needed, but getting what we really needed um, or, or what we'll do for now to, uh, to meet the need. Um, Venus is here to do the work. It, it, very cooperative, very open to trying something new. So this shifting landscape of resources looks like less of a problem because we're willing to work on it. We're willing to try something different and we're willing to be a little less particular about how we get those needs met. And with all of that said, I'm going to turn that card. Okay. <laughs> um, Eight of Swords. So... Remember what I said about being less particular about how we get our needs met. Remember what I said about um, pointing to which walls we need to come down so that we can communicate with others about what our needs and desires are and how they can help us. Swords, you know, swords, you just, you know, shorten it to words, okay? Eight words. <laughs> uh, swords is about your thoughts, plans, and communications, okay? They... Uh, they, it, it, it takes balance to communicate well and, uh, you know, to use this tool without doing harm. And in the Eight of Swords, we see somebody who is sort of uh, blind to the fact that they have all the tools they need at their, their disposal. They're sort of sitting there in a puddle of, uh, of weak emotion <laughs> and, you know, feeling, un feeling unempowered, sort of tied up in ropes with a blindfold across their face so maybe they maybe they had a little help getting into this situation but definitely there's there was a certain amount of agreeing to it as well and uh you know at this point nobody is threatening this person and really if uh this person could just find a way to loosen the veil over their eyes or or loosen their arms out of these ropes they would find that they have swords aplenty at their disposal to help set themselves free Words aplenty, thoughts, plan, the power to think, plan, and communicate is right at hand, okay? To get yourself out of this situation that you have acquiesced yourself into or that you, you know, you were sort of coaxed or cajoled or tricked into. Um, one way or another, you made some choices to get here and there are some choices you can made, make to get out, but you're going to have to work for it. And that's funny that that comes up because then we see Venus over here with uh, Saturn going quincoots to Saturn and asking you about your work and life balance, right? So uh, perhaps perhaps it's one part of your life that where you feel so disempowered 
maybe there's a maybe the reason things are out of balance is that you feel dis disempowered in both places or that you feel disempowered in one place but not entirely empowered in the other place either uh we we really have to find a balance and i don't i don't think that the balance should be oh i have all the power at work so it doesn't matter that that nobody treats me well at home we've got to come to an agreement that we're going to tell people tell people let people know how they can treat us and when we do that work we are blessed with positive good fortune for that inner work of expanding um, our idea about what we can be do and have expand your idea of what you can be do and have all the tools you you need are right there and taken together with the six of wands wands and swords so fire and air air feeds fire uh I mean, could there possibly be two different cards? I mean, possibly there are two different cards. There are a lot of cards. But, you know, this person has, has pursued their passion with, like, honesty and clarity and enthusiasm. This person has probably pursued something like security. <laughs> and, and they've done it by saying yes to things they didn't understand or wouldn't have said yes to if they had known the trapped feeling they would find themselves in. So, um, you know, this person uses all the tools at their disposal to get done what they need to do. This person sort of stands there feeling bad for themselves and not understanding that they have the power to break free from this situation. And perhaps this person hopes that somebody is getting ready to ride into the rescue. If you look at the way these are posed together, it, it looks almost as though this person dreams of a, a kind of a, a victor or a knight in shining armor, willing and ready to come and, and rescue her from the bad situation she's gotten herself into. And I'm using the gendered term she, but um, this could be for anybody. And... Uh, you know, what we have to understand in this situation is that um, even if somebody notices and even, even if somebody tries to rescue us, okay, we have to say the words and make the choices and make the plans that get ourselves out of the situation that we put ourselves in. The power is still in your hands, okay? We can have help. That's okay to have help. It's okay to have, you know, a hero sort of uh, you know, drive up to the door so that you can make your escape, right? Uh, but don't go depending on that hero to fight your battle for you. Don't go depending on that hero to uh, make the communications you have to make with people to leave the situation, to tell people the truth about uh, what it is that you really need and desire for your life. And to be honest with yourself about the miserable condition you've gotten yourself into, there's nothing a hero can do. Uh, about your self-esteem, okay? You're going to have to do that part for yourself as well. And the best thing to do for your self-esteem uh, self is the really hard thing, which is to say the words and make the plans and do the things that, that get you out of that situation. You're going to have to show some strength, okay? But if you show some strength, then you don't have to be this eight of swords anymore, okay? If you wake up and you wrestle free of your bonds, okay, tell people, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm not being bound to this anymore, okay, and you, and you tell people what it is that you really need, what you really want for yourself, and, um, you know, that takes a lot of strength, and if you do that, if you do that in a determined way, and especially if you do that in a de determined way, and then you feel that joy and that excitement when you get free, you feel that joy and excitement of getting free, then this can be you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need a hero to come writing in. You are the hero that can come writing in. You will be the victorious one, okay? You were determined. You found yourself in a terrible situation. You were determined to get out of it, and you did the work. So congratulations if that's you. And I believe that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your company. I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.